So today we're here at Frost Science and we're gonna go in and see the aquarium. And it's an exciting day because we've been friends with some of the key players here at Frost Science for years. I was here originally when they opened up about five years ago and it's really grown tremendously. They've had some significant growth in the animals and changes in, in the aquariums and it's just really a neat facility. Growing up down here in Miami as a kid, this was just an old dock area for where ships would come in and offload and then it became a bicentennial park and eventually the city got involved the county got involved and the frost themselves mr and mrs frost got involved and built this really tremendous building and this beautiful aquarium and science center and it's a real mecca you got students here it's just a great educational facility we're here to give them a nice donation and um, help support the museum and all the great educational efforts Just look how fabulous you got the Port of Miami right there. Got this really fabulous view. And it's certainly awesome. Let's go look at some corals. We run water qualities every day. Depends on what system. We just built this, just the jelly culture system right now, all moons. So we've got about, I think, over 50 different genotypes. So the game plan between us, Florida Aquarium, and Moat Marine Lab is to kind of hold all the different genotypes of the pillar coral to, to weight out the stony coral tissue loss disease. You know, restoration efforts are not going to solve the problem. We need to solve source issues. Um, I mean, restoration efforts are, are labor intensive. They, they face the same dangers as soon as you plant them that everybody else does. So right. can you do it more resiliently? Can you do, do different genotypes? And more importantly, can you build these hubs? And that's really what we're looking at now is building hubs of coral restoration so that they can fertilize, have all the animals, have different coral, rather than kind of having one plot of staghorn, one plot of something else, do it all in kind of concentric tight areas so that you can, and close enough to each other that they can, they can cross fertilize. These are engineered to look at kind of micro habitats, places where corals are going to want to settle out, what areas grow algae, what don't. Um, they've worked with a number of different designs. That star pattern, the flat star pattern, seems to be their most preferred method right now, but we actually help them kind of cure, the, cure these substrates for biofilm. We have a group of about 30 adult urchins, which probably is the largest shore-based collection of urchins in the entire United States. So uh, we're hoping to really kind of maximize that. And those are here on site? Those are at FIU. Oh, at FIU. Where did those starts come from, all of the Cervicornis? Uh, those are all from uh, Rescue Reef UM. At UM, okay, yeah. so off Key Biscayne then? Yeah, all right. they're part of their nursery. Right. And how old are those now, three years? Uh, we've, we've fragmented them probably four or five times by now. Mm -hmm. Now we use them in that coral tree exhibit. Downstairs? Yeah. Right. The, the but you've had those, the total of them for? Probably four years, five, five years? years five, five years. Five years, we opened May 2017. Keep your toes out of the aquarium. There may be a shark. Um, so yeah, so these are two roseate spoonbills, part of a species survival program. They were uh, captively born at Seawall of Orlando. Early morning is normally feed time. Everybody's up high. Hey guys, JC here from Jellyfish Art. An amazing day today, and I know for a fact they have jellyfish here, so we're really excited about that. Maybe we'll get to see them in a little bit.
So he does the whole window every uh, other? Tuesday, Thursday, and then a volunteer team does it on Saturdays. Tuesday, Thursday, we do, we scrub the walls with the hull scrubber first, and then we do the, the window. Wow. And then we have a volunteer team that doesn't use the hull scrubber, just does the window. But with a big buffing wheel or something? No, it's a big, hard, heavy bristle. Uh, we gotta get all the, the blue walls, the algae on The whole thing. Yeah. Somebody that can last three hours on a tank in here, maybe two? Uh, when you're on the scrubber, it's about, like, lab probably our best on the scrubber. And yeah. It's at 80 minutes. Right. The yes. the thing just kicks your butt. Right. But it's it's automatic now? It's just motorized or hand? It's, uh, it's pneumatic. Water, water pressure. Yeah, pneumatic. just truly spectacular from the filtration to the algaes to all the fish they're truly a well thought out organization and everything is extremely professional and they're amazing ecosystems we've got scrubbers on them on a lot of these big tanks in the shop too and i'm telling you we don't have any phosphate just a cws clear water scrubbers with the red lights on the side of the panel it's remarkable that there's no phosphate Frost Science today, and we figured we would make a nice little donation to, to help out with all the conservation and education efforts here, and it's a real exciting day. Uh, the whole team loves coming here to Frost Science, and we love the displays. Super nice. Thank you so much, and it's a pleasure to be able to donate this to the Frost Museum. Thank you very much. You guys have been great partners. We love working with you guys for jellies and corals. Thank you. <laughs> Places like this make such a difference in people's lives because it's about the beauty of things, the beauty of the ocean, the beauty of these amazing aquariums, but it's also about, and most importantly, education. Places like this teach people about the oceans, teach people about ecosystems, teach people about our beautiful planet and how we need to take care of it. Definitely come and check it out. Frost Museum of Science in Miami, Florida.